He's the smartest guy I've ever met. But I mostly hang out with nightclub comics, so I don't know <laughs> if that's saying anything. But anyways, Jim, how you doing, pal? Norm, it's so good to hear your voice. <laughs> Why do you say that? Uh, because you're supposed to, right? <laughs> like this. So what do you no, want? I, 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 I'm a big fan of Norm MacDonald, uh, America. <laughs> Jim and I worked together on a weekend update and got Best fired update together. update ever in the history of television. Absolutely. And we got fired together. That's right. <laughs> Uh, which just only confirmed it in the minds of people like me. <laughs> but Norm, yes. you know, you said a few minutes ago when I was listening, you brought up Iran Contra, and I actually just wanted to underscore uh, the point you made that you weren't confident uh, enough in, which was that, um, you know, when people talk about Iran Contra, they they always talk about the rape of the Constitution and the shredding of you know the Bill of Rights and and our founding fathers are rolling over in their graves and. The, the issue at stake in Iran-Contra was this thing called the Boland Amendment, which was passed, I think, like in the 80s or late 70s. And it, the administration at the time said this is, it was basically a Congress saying that the president uh, couldn't do certain things in, in terms of his war powers and without their approval. And the uh, Reagan administration at the time said, uh, this is ridiculous, this is an unconstitutional bill, you cannot... The Constitution clearly, you know, gives the president these powers, and it was disputed, but never challenged in court. So this was this was a like a three or four year old, five year old uh, amendment that had that would never been uh, accepted by the other branch of government, and it wasn't. We weren't talking about tearing up the Constitution. In any case, what they did was they they uh, uh, got money by selling arms to like the ninth worst regime on earth to use against the seventh worst regime on earth, made a profit, gave it to the Contras, got the hostages released, and the Contras later won the election uh, it, that Jimmy Carter supervised, so uh, they must have at least been a little more popular than the Sandinistas. So I agree. I think if, if, if most things that uh, the Bush administration had done worked anywhere near that well, he'd be a very popular man right now. Wow, so Jim anyway, agrees so with you. You were right. <laughs> but uh, not for the right reasons. Hey, uh, Jim, I, I couldn't get that answer from that la- from Ken, but uh, why is Ahmadinejad more powerful than Abel Hassam Bani Sadr? <laughs> well, um, now I, I haven't kept it all straight, but you know that Bani Sadr was, was uh, executed by the regime like just a year or two after the hostages came out, or maybe even before they were released. And it was his there wife, too? There was a period too? there where, remember, there was Sadak Gotsbade, who was the more westernized spokesman, but no. they were going through prime ministers and, and uh, you know, ministers of state and so on uh, pretty quickly there. They're, uh, that was a crazy regime. Still is. But now, is this new, is this Khamenei guy also the spiritual leader? Well, you know, I, I, I have to say, I, I, thought, I thought myself that there, there was a new Ayatollah since then, uh, but a grand Ayatollah, but I, I, I can't, I have to plead ignorance. Ah, oh, shoot. I'm missing a lot of things. Where does that leave us, then? Uh, SOL, my friend. <laughs> you know, but, Jim's um, an actor as well. Yes, I know. I've seen him in... Uh... Oh, and uh, There Will there Be Blood. There Will Be there Blood. Will be blood. Yeah. That was fantastic. Jim, I keep telling everybody that, that Daniel Day-Lewis is just doing an impression of uh, John Huston. Well, I think, I think he might have, uh, you know, been inspired by by that but uh um he was great though oh he's fantastic I, yeah. I mean he won the oscar I know. so that proves it right <laughs> did nothing wrong did he stay great in character man. uh in between the was he always in character um was he one of those experience yeah um we would we would ride back and forth you know uh to the to the scene because the the set where where we shot it was was on a ranch but uh, a gigantic ranch of many thousand acres, and it was so. Uh, they've had like a thirty-year drought there, and it was so uh, dusty that we couldn't drive more than like ten miles an hour or something. It was like creeping along. Otherwise, right. anything else would kick up huge amounts of dust. And so we were, we'd be in the car for these long rides, and he he pretty much stayed in character for you know talking conversations about like weekends and stuff. Uh, he's an interesting guy. I liked him a lot. Huh. Uh, so how would he talk? And <laughs> how would he talk? Well, he, he 
I'd say like, um, so uh, we got a three-day break, I guess, so are you going to try to do anything interesting? Well, I, I was going to go to Carlsbad Caverns, <laughs> but uh, I think I might stay closer to home. <laughs> to be honest, it's the best burger I ever had. <laughs> you know, it's just funny to hear that voice uh, come out of that, that uh, face. That's great. <laughs> but, um, so Norm on Iran-Contra, don't, yeah. uh, don't apologize. <laughs> Hey, Jim. Yeah? You know I was mentioning how great you were and everything? Yeah, thanks so much. And and how you saved the show every four years? Yeah, I bet they like hearing that. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. that's what you feel, too, right? Yes. <laughs> I think I'm, I, you know, I certainly make my contribution. And because I saw a book, I, I, was, I was in a bookstore. I know you're familiar with bookstores. Oh, yeah. You're not one of these fellows that go on Amazon. I bet you probably aren't computer savvy like me. Like I am not. I'm not really computer savvy because I, I I really believe they're Satan's uh, uh, instrument. And uh, you you ser- you're serious, right? Um, absolutely. You know me and Satan. No, I I um I just haven't really gotten around to it. Oh, you so know? you don't see that 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 they're. Probably. I don't. I don't really uh, go online and and use computers and stuff. But anyways, I was going to say, I was in a bookstore, and I saw there's a book actually called Strategery. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. And that you made that up. I did make that up. I should have copyrighted it, like, three peat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> then I'd, uh, I could have made, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, maybe. Didn't they actually start using that term? I think the, the, they started yeah, using I, that I've term heard, as part I've of their... I heard that they, they, they sort of... They liked it and, and adopted it, and they would they would call their meetings strategic sessions. And I know Rush Limbaugh used it a lot. You know what um, term they use, Steve? I mean, uh, Jim, a lot. Hmm. Remember when I would start the the weekend update? I go, "This is the fake news because it was such a retarded right. thing to say." Now they say instead of mock news, they actually say fake news. Like they'll say, "Like uh, Stephen Colbert does a fake news program," or you know what I mean. Well, yeah, and then you and me are in the same boat. We got to get a lawyer. <laughs> but in right? this case, in the fake news case, it's it's just idiotic that they've that they use it because it was meant to be a, a sort of silly. Well, um, you know, so I, obviously, I didn't think that I, I was sort of surprised that the Bush people liked strategy too. They, they, um, but you know, people have. What do you mean, the Bush people? Well, that that it it wasn't. I mean, it was sort of making fun of him, of course, uh, when I put that word in his mouth in that sketch. But but they like loved it. They thought it was the greatest thing ever. So um, that's why they they themselves started calling their their uh, morning meeting strategic sessions. I guess. Huh. Now, do you think that's because George Bush is just contemptuous of? I I don't think so. I think they just they just have embraced sort of self-deprecation, you know? I, I, I think that uh, that's always been his response to being made fun of, right? Who are you to, supporting, to Barack? Own it. Um, I, well, you know what? I actually, this year, I, I kind of like both uh, candidates uh, for very different reasons. I mean, you know, Barack Obama, it's hard to argue, is, is like the first really cool guy who's run for president in our, like, sentient lifetimes. I mean, you know, you weren't probably alive, and, and I was a, a tiny kid when uh, JFK... Well, but, but I, I, I was but I was, a, uh, I was a young man when... Pierre Trudeau, right? Yeah, who was very cool. Yeah, and it, it is... It is uh, it's, it's an actual value. I mean, it, uh, it would certainly be more fun to travel in Europe, I would think, uh, when Obama is president, but... You know, on the other hand, McCain has a, uh, there's a lot to admire about him, although we're not seeing as much of it as we, we saw eight years ago when he ran um, for the nomination. You know? You know, but I, I did see him, like, on C-SPAN the other night doing one of these town hall meetings, and the guy's exceptional at one-on-one speaking with someone. Well, yeah, I mean, his, 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 that's where you can most impress people by straight talk, you know, because you're... It's face to face with with uh, someone. It's it's uh, now. If Obama was doing that face to face, would he come off as dogmatic or? No, I think I think he I think Obama is great at every single form of communication. He's great at the big speech, you know, the the rock rock and roll kind of thing in the arena, and he's he's great in um, 
you know, the smaller town hall things. It, they said it, it, in debates he wasn't, uh, he wasn't as good, but I, I think that, that he just wasn't as aggressive in debates, which is another thing, and, and I'm not sure that people uh, necessarily want people to be that, that uh, uh, aggressive. Okay. You, you don't want to come down. You don't. You don't want him. You're afraid he's going to look like Jim Brown or something if he. <laughs> well, no. Is that no, what you're I saying? Just, I just. I don't mean that at all. I just mean that. That you know, in in the debates like with with Hillary, where where she was going after him more, um, and, and people said, well, he seemed on the defensive. But that's just because he was, he was sort of trying to deflect and not land any punches, and and I, I think he was sort of um, aware that. Uh, uh, if he just stayed cool, he he had a lead and he was going to end up winning. You know, I mean, he had, it was a brilliant strategy. He ran for the nomination. I mean, if you think about it, uh, he he was such a long shot, and he just he just figured that uh, um, he will he will clean up in all these little places uh, where uh, the Hillary Clinton won't bother to invest any resources. And then, you know, so I I read somewhere the other day that he. Um, like Idaho, <laughs> you should probably have no Democratic delegates since they're not going to be able to deliver anything for the Democrats. But um, they had like 14 delegates or something, and Obama won, I think, 13 of them, you know? Wow. Hmm. And, and he, then he would lose a state like New Jersey to Hillary, but lose by like 12 delegates. So, you know, it was a brilliant... I mean, Hillary probably could have, could have blown him away had she just, you know... Uh, taken the thing much more seriously in the beginning and just made sure that she was going to crush the opposition in every single arena. Hey, Jim, can you stay for another section? If you'll have me. I call them sections. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with our next section. Hi, Norm McDonald filling in for Dennis Miller and the Dennis Miller Show. The number to call is 866-509-RANT, 866-509-7268. If you have any questions for uh, <clears throat> Jim Downey, who is a fascinating guy and uh, was there since the, I don't know if it was quite since the beginning of Saturday Night Live, but it's close to, shared an office with Bill Murray, didn't you, Jim? Yes. Oh, yes. The second season, I came the second season, same time Bill did. Oh, yeah, yeah. But listen, man, Steve has a question for you. It's all right if, if America has no questions. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> a head. <laughs> no, America, America's going to be... <laughs> our, our things might crash. Don't things crash? But Steve uh, has a question, a political question. Okay. Just you're so well informed, I'm just curious what your opinion is. With uh, Obama, he's such a great speaker, but how do we know he's more than a great speaker and maybe it doesn't matter i mean maybe a, being a great speaker is enough to just motivate the country what do you think about that um well I, you know the thing is uh in in a way as president being a great speaker is is more of a qualification than um than having a great uh you know issue agenda because an issue agenda can be supplied by really smart unattractive behind the scenes people right but to sell something like like I thought one of Bush's one of the crazy things truly really crazy things that Bush did was when you do when you have like an unpopular agenda like a war in Iraq that that we started right you damn well better have a uh, like a kick ass uh, persona to sell it you know and to 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 pair like an unpopular initiative with an awkward and inarticulate uh, defender right. of that of that initiative is is like the worst of everything. Like in Clinton, you had almost the opposite, where he would he was playing it so safe he would he would push really like tiny uh, miniature little little uncontroversial things that poll tested at like sixty percent. But then he had you know a much he was much better at selling things than right. than uh, George W. Bush is, and and I'm not saying that 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 someone like Barack Obama could have totally sold uh, Americans on the Iraq war, but they would have, he would have done a much better job because, you know, uh, they, uh, uh, clearly, I mean, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, a, uh, I know before we went in, 
I'm pretty sure that it was the public was slightly against. It was it was like you know, right, forty nine, forty six, or something. Um, only when it only was really popular when it looked like it was easy. You know, the first couple months, right? And then it's been you know, but it was. I, I'll give Bush this at least that that he wasn't afraid to do something unpopular. But the problem is, you really, you know, presidents need to be uh, eloquent and they they need to be articulate because they have to. If they're going to do anything worthwhile, it's going to probably be unpopular with at least a, a, a decent chunk of the population, and, and you have to be you have to be able to sell it. Hey Jim, yeah, <laughs> are you on Steve down with your gab fest? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We're like a couple of chatterboxes. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. A couple. Of, that's just a hen house horse. Hey, we're going to go to break, but then we got all these questions for you, Jim. So you'll stick around, right? All right. Okay. Cool. The Dennis Miller Show. Fifteen seconds. Guidance internal. Thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight. Ignition sequence start. Engines on. Five, four, three, two, one. All engines running. Launch commit. We have liftoff at 9:34. The Dennis Miller Show. Eight six six. Five oh nine seven two six eight. This is the Dennis Miller Show. Dennis is on assignment. Norm McDonald reporting. Uh, we have with us Jim Downey, who uh, is uh, probably, other than Lauren, the uh, most important thing to the success of that show throughout the years. He's been there since near inception. And uh, so if you have any questions about Saturday Night Live, this would be the guy to ask. So uh, give us a call at 866-509-RANT. That's 866-509-7268. For those of you that weren't listening, 866-509-7268. Hey, Jim, it's yeah. Stevie here. When you started on Saturday Night Live, it was the second year of the show, right? Right. So they were still doing all the, the cocaine and the drugs. Well, it got and good the... the second year, you know. <laughs> That's right. That, that, that is where the, the famous year. Uh, but what? How long did those drug years last? Like when did that stop? Like all the the wild, crazy. I, it wasn't. It wasn't particularly uh, wild and crazy. I think to the really? extent that stuff like that happened, it was more uh, to stay awake than it was to you know have a good time. And and I I think it it that stuff was pretty much gone by like the third season, you know. Uh, you know, it's 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 just because of the you know spectacular Belushi story. Uh, right. it, it has a lot of uh, um, you know that's been etched into the consciousness, but uh, it really was not much of a feature of the I show. I see. That's interesting because even at the time he was extreme, so I guess that sort of colors what the whole world must have been like. Well, yeah. I mean, he was um, he was you know one of a kind, and and, and obviously. His his most destructive he was phase one, was after he left the show, you know. He was one of a kind. Yeah. What about Jim he? Belushi? <laughs> there was a, there was Jim Belushi. Jim is is very close, and actually, Jim Belushi, let me say, is one of the best actors who's ever been on that show. Wow. I mean, if you ever saw Jim in like uh, Salvador or, or something, he's a really good actor. Um, uh -huh. Hey Jim, do you mind and talking? John was too, huh? Do you mind talking to the? Uh, the hoi polloi, as you call them? <laughs> as I, I, well, I'd like to dismiss them as the hoi polloi. Listen, Norm, I want to make clear to the audience that yeah. I haven't been at the show every single year. I tend to come and go, and certainly if well, no, you had to leave. I didn't like, I was not there. You had to leave to create uh, the David Letterman show. You bet. That's right. We have a question from Gary in Saginaw, Michigan. Okay. You want to hear it? I'd love to hear Gary's question. Hey, Gary, what's up? Norm, first of all, I want to tell you what a pleasure it is to talk to you, first of all. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's very exciting for me. Thanks for filling in for Dennis, man. I love Saturday Night Live. I love your movies. Ah, you're sweet. Uh, uh, you're, you're a heck of a guy, man. I love your kind of humor. You know, there's, there's not very many norms around in this world, and we need more, but uh, I'm happy with you. So uh, how's it going? <laughs> it's going great, man, but I thought you were going to ask Jim a question. Yeah, yeah, I got one for him, too, but I want to talk the whole stuff. <laughs> That's nice, man. You're a good man. 
So, uh, Jim, uh, what do you got poking in the fire? <laughs> um, well, I'm I'm hoping this goes really well, and, and I could I could do another uh, couple of uh, sections of Dennis's show. Maybe I'm not not with Dennis right away. I'm not you know I'm not saying that, but you know uh, uh, certainly Norm. I think Norm would have me back, right, Norm? Hey, listen, man, uh, I'd have you back well. anytime. But um, sick, but I don't think that's no, what he, I'm, I'm, I don't think really, that's what he meant. I, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't think um, that's what he meant when he said. Back at the show, I'm going to be back at the show next fall. Uh, and they just issued the schedule and and. Uh, what sketches have you got working on? You, you don't. I, don't I mean, it's probably it's going to be um, uh, mostly political stuff for the fall because they, uh, God bless him, Lauren uh, is starting a month earlier than we usually start and starting with four in a row. Which is something you've never done, I'll bet, Norm. I've never done four but we're in a row. Going on September thirteenth, we're going to be on for the next four weeks with one week off and then three weeks. Wow! So it's going to be uh, we're we're going to be dead. If you're going to do four in a row, you're not going to have much time for poking around in the fire. <laughs> no, no, that's a terrible way to find ideas too. It's like one, two, three, four, five. Six. I was just looking at. We have like seven shows before the election, plus three prime time thursday specials that's wow and wow. different elements of pre-election stuff hey you want to take another question from what well, that's you, what i'm going to be doing you want to take another question from what you refer to as the uh, great unwashed <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i think it on radio that'd be okay right yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get hurt on radio this is okay. gary from new mexico oh great i like the land of hey, enchantment how's it going the land of what? Get? Land of yeah. enchantment, right? Land of enchantment. Yeah, it's beautiful over here. It's been raining every afternoon. It's just couldn't couldn't be better. Life's great over here. Just like another day in paradise. It's great. And I just wanted to say, hey, Norm, uh, man, thanks for all the many many laughs. Your 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 tops in my book. Anyway, my question is, uh, which comedian was the is the best and 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 is the most genuine and truly great to work with? Uh, on you know, as far as. Uh, being nice off the set during you know during takes and all that stuff. Who's the best comedian to, to work with? Who's the sweetest comedian? You mean a, w a woman, right? Right, right. Yeah, comedian. I'll bet Norm's going to say Roseanne, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, wouldn't you, Norm? Yeah, I loved Roseanne. Yeah. yeah, I like her too. I've always had a great time. I, I, but this is was directed at Norm, right? No, no, it was directed at you about the uh, well, comedian in in. I guess he means like not people who've been in our cast. At the no, show, he members. He means people that have been in the cast. Oh well, I mean, I, let me say that I would say that that the last couple of years uh, now, now Maya Rudolph has left the show. But I would say at the time when we had Maya Rudolph and and uh, Amy Poehler and and uh, uh, Kristen Wiig, I would say those three easily the best group of women. There's no other group of women comes close as far Boy, as... Boy, Kristen Wiig, I saw her do something on Update. I don't know what it was, but she talked real fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Man, that was a real tour good. de force. Yeah, yeah but, but that, I'd say that group of women um, as a group, it's, it's the best the show's ever had. And, and, uh, uh, and, and the new uh, girl, Casey Wilson, is great, too, and she's going to be right up there. She's just starting out. But, um, she's the heavier lady. But, well, yeah. she's... no. But but she's a new girl. But but the, no, the, I meant um, heavyweight. What do you think? What are you talking about? No, but but the why does but everything over the, have to over go? Over the years of the show, there have never been uh, uh, there's never been a group like that. There have been individual uh, women here and there, and 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 of the we you know normally have we ever had many women hosts who are comedians as opposed to actors? I don't think we've had that many. No. I mean, Ro Roseanne Barr is. Uh, is well, the only we, one we I had really coming to mind. Yeah, huh? we had, yeah, we had Roseanne, and and Ellen DeGeneres was was I, I think is really funny. Mm -hmm. uh, but are, you nice don't think women are as funny as men, right? Um, <laughs> I I do. I think that men are much more interested as as a as you know generally speaking in comedy and and uh, it's you know the norm is more guys trying to make girls laugh than the reverse, right? So. So I mean I think that's why men tend to predominate in comedy, but um, that, I mean you know the, there's always plenty of openings for. Who's a great woman really writer? Fun. Name five great women writers on Saturday Night Live. Um, I would say uh, right now we have Paula Pell, who's great. Uh, we have. Um, uh, 
Hey, you want to take what? a call from Joel? <laughs> Wait a minute. In Kansas not City? Me... No, I don't uh, want to embarrass you. You're having trouble getting past one. <laughs> not. Here's Joel from Kansas City. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jim, uh, yes. I hope you're no relation to uh, Robert Sr. or Jr. Uh, it, it's uh, complicated. Okay, uh, I won't go there. I don't hey, I've been a great it. fan of the show since 72, and I've never, never gotten a straight answer other than Lauren's genius. But why is it that every time the group changes, I can't stand them? The show has gone to pot, it's awful, and two years later, they're the best ever. How could they do this for 35 years? Well, did I you work on I the show in 1972, Jim? <laughs> well, <laughs> I wasn't I on the air there. Now, give him a break. Now, I, I would say that if that hasn't always worked, but um, there was like we had a really bad group uh, that that I had nothing to do with the picking of. But in 1985, that 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 was kind of a disastrous season. But I would say in general, it's true because people people um, just sit on their hands and sort of resent the new people and, and need to be won over. Hey, and, Jim. Uh, it takes people a year or two to find their footing yeah, at Jim, the show. Yeah, Jim, that's, that's cool, man. Listen, Bryce has a great question, and it's a question that I've always wondered about. Bryce, are you there? Hey, I am, man. How you doing? Good, man. Hey. He's from the Mile hey. High City, Jim. Well, I'm oh, my telling God. You, it's, uh, so this is like a Western theme. It, it really sucks here, so all these Californians and Texans can go back home. Yeah. Uh, hey, I quit watching TV when they canceled your show, Norm. Uh, I want you to know. <laughs> quit watching TV? Yeah, I quit watching TV when they canceled your show. Oh, that's nice. So did that you. Uh, a lot of I, I got a question for Steve. Was Pat a man or a woman? Pat was... Yeah, was Pat a man or a woman? Pat was a man. Pat was a man. And I think that should have been obvious to anyone who who really watched Farley the show told carefully. Me. Chris Farley told me it was a woman. Maybe it was a woman. It might have been a woman. <laughs> he said it was Pat could have been a woman. He said it was played by some broad. Pat was played by uh, a, a woman, Julia Sweeney, who created the character. Oh, well, she's a woman then. Okay. A woman, but no, but he means conceptually what was Pat uh, uh, meant to be in reality. And I think, I think Pat was a man. That's just a theory. That makes sense because it was played by a woman, so he was a, fe a very feminine man. Yeah, it seems like otherwise, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, it, she could could have been a woman too. So uh, I hope I've I've covered that. <laughs> Norm, you cut me off when I was naming my favorite women writers. I didn't get to say Emily Spivey, who's who's there right now, who's a genius. Uh, you're just naming people that are on this. Pam Norris, sh huh? No, Pam Norris was was a writer like 20 years ago. Okay, keep going. That's three. Okay, go. Rosie Schuster. Yeah. Uh, I'm just a. Uh, um, it's four. <laughs> Tina Fey is a great writer, but I think of her now as a performer. But she's a very good writer. Well, that's five. Uh, that's you did five. it, you Jim. Go. You did it. You did it. <laughs> oh, I could. I could go on and on. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Let's do ten then. <laughs> let's no. Let's let's. Because uh, then I'm just going to piss off people I don't name. If, All if right, Jim. We'll we'll take a break and let and we'll let you collect your thoughts. Okay. <laughs> Norm McDonald, sitting in for Dennis Miller on the Dennis Miller Show. I'm here with Stevie Ray Fromstein, and uh, we're still talking to Jim Downey, who's been kind enough to stay with us. Jim Downey, he's a, he's a pundit, <laughs> and he's a yeah. writer, but I want to talk about his acting career, because Jim's a great actor, and uh, on Saturday Night Live, he created, um, he did Change Bank, which was a very funny uh, sketch. And uh, he sometimes casts himself when he thinks it's the right choice to make. Once every ten, every ten or fifteen years, yeah. I, I cast myself. But then you have guys like Paul Thomas Anderson and uh, Bob Saget and directors like that. that, <laughs> that That's uh, right. Tamara Tamara Davis. Tamara Davis. So. Yeah, so so I, I your, pick my shot. But, but what was you know? your best performance, seriously? Honest to God, in film, what was it? I know the answer, but dirty work. Um, I well, the one that people seem to talk about at all <laughs> was uh, 
was uh, uh, Billy Madison. Yeah, because you, what was the speech you said? It was a variation of the thing that, Norm, you probably heard me say to Chris Farley many times yeah. in writer's rooms, but just about how, you know, uh, that suggestion or idea was so uh, idiotic that everyone who heard it is now dumber. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> did, you, were you, did you write the Chris Farley show? Yes. Yeah. I mean... It's hard. I mean, it was basically sort of inspired so heavily by Chris Farley. It's not like I said, do you think you could do this? You know, it was more, I have a, I want you to just do exactly what the kind of thing you're always doing, you know. But you knew Chris, you know, Norm, you knew him. He, he, uh, he would, he would do that kind of stuff. Um, uh, sit and just pump you for information about, about stuff where clearly he knew it in the subject better than you did. Who was the know? funniest guy ever on Saturday Night Live? Man, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I prefer to say that there's like a group of like 10 people who it's hard to find, because, you know, it, it's, it's... Is it Paula uh, Pell, or? Uh, well, she's not a performer on the show, but... but no, I, but I mean just in the room? No. Uh, oh, you it, mean the fun, well, you know, I thought, I always thought that, uh, uh, Norm, you were one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life, certainly. No, no, I'm I talking can't about think of, um, well, like, Bill like, Murray? like David Spade is hilarious. He's unbelievably right? funny, but I meant... Yeah, he's he's probably the funniest guy in in real life. But I'm saying but you're, uh, on you're, on uh, as a sketch performer. As a sketch performer, I mean, the list would, and I don't know how to pick from among it, but it would have to include uh, Aykroyd, um, Bill Murray, uh, Eddie Murphy, uh, Dana Carvey. Uh, um, uh, well, geez, Will Ferrell. Uh, uh-huh. um, I think I think uh So you didn't of, like Belushi then? <laughs> well, I'm just I don't know that I don't I wouldn't put John at the first tier. That's all I'm saying. I'd put him like second team. Because just like a Cuz I know no, cuz otherwise this this first team's going to have way way too many guys and they won't get playing time and they'll be unhappy. That's interesting you didn't mention a woman. Oh, I thought you said the funniest guys. I was going to say the women next. I said the funniest performers. Okay, well there at C, I hate women. <laughs> you got it out of me. <laughs> Still, um, I think that uh, uh, also it, it just well, I'd say That's the women we have now. I mean, I don't know how you'd have to p- how you'd pick between among I should say uh, Maya Rudolph and uh, Amy Poehler and Chris Wig. I mean, I think you'd choose Gilda Radner, wouldn't you? Um, well, I I I, I love Gilda Radner, and I think she was really funny. Uh, I I again, okay, she's on the first team. She made the first team. Sweet, um, Jim. But uh, um, and then I, I better think of the ones I knew. Well, Jan Hooks was great, you oh, know. Yeah. Um, okay, we know you like girls. 